here in Australia, this ResMed AirSense 10 Auto Set retails for about two and a half thousand dollars. While some models like this ResMed BiPAP over here can retail over eight thousand dollars. Have you ever wondered why? What is it about each model that determines its retail price? If you were going shopping for say a new iPhone, you might expect to pay a little bit more for a larger screen, more storage, maybe a better camera with more megapixels. But what are the manufacturing differences between CPAP machines that result in such huge fluctuations in the retail prices? The answer might come as a surprise. In early 2020 when COVID hit, many hospitals were unprepared. There simply wasn't enough ventilators to go around. And the question was asked, could you somehow take a basic CPAP machine readily available and modify it in such a way so that it can function like a non-invasive ventilator like this ResMed BiPAP over here to help out in the crisis? And the answer is yes. A really clever guy named Tramel came up with a jailbreak for CPAPs. A way to unlock a CPAP's full potential so that it can function as a BiPAP to help out in the crisis. And he named it the Airbrake. And he demonstrated with Airbrake that the actual difference between a low-end CPAP and a high-end BiPAP, apart from the exorbitant cost, is actually just a simple software upgrade. Right. From a manufacturing point of view, this makes perfect sense. You only have to build one product instead of many, and this saves on a number of costs. You just build the one machine, flash it with different firmware, paint it a different color, and then charge through the nose, easy. Now, knowing this information doesn't really change anything. I just found it fascinating and wanted to share it with you. I mean, I find it interesting that these two devices, thousands of dollars apart, are virtually identical. They're the same product, just running different firmware on them. And I'm not having a go at ResMed. They would have spent millions of dollars developing the firmware and the software, hiring the software engineers. I imagine they're not cheap, but it, you know, it's interesting. And I guess you could ask the question, does a simple firmware upgrade justify a sometimes 500% increase in the retail price of the product? And you can make up your own minds on that. Over the weekend, I was a little bit bored, still in lockdown, just in case you were wondering. So I thought, let's have a go. And I did it. I performed the air brake on my AirSense 10. So dumped off the old firmware, flashed it with the BiPAP firmware, and now I have pretty much every mode ResMed's ever developed included in the one device and it works beautifully. Now, it is certainly not an easy task, let me tell you that. And I don't recommend you do it because if you don't do it properly, there's a real chance that you're gonna brick your device. And if you do that, you can just put it in the bin with your dream station because it's useless. You're also gonna void your warranty and so on. I might do a little tutorial on it in the future just for shits and giggles, just so you can see what I do. Um, if you want to read up on it in the meantime and have a look at the steps, click the link above. That's going to take you to the airbrake.dev website and you can read about Tramel's experiment and all the different pros and cons and, and what he did. Just before I go, I'd love to give a special shout out to my Kiwi brother Tyler, who's an absolute legend. Thanks for all your help, bro. Really appreciate it. And thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe, share it with your mates and have yourselves a great day. See ya. We could make trillions. Why make trillions when we could make billions?